morning, everybody. Currently down in the wool shed with Dad. Um, we got a bit on today, a bit of cattle work. Um, we're sort of waiting for Mum to be ready for that. So we are looking at the wool press currently. So if you guys have been following along, you'll remember during wool, uh, shearing, or when we bought it and then during shearing, we realised that one of the rams was bent at the top. I don't know how well you can tell yeah, that it's bent there. There's a slight bow to it. So we're gonna try and pull that ram apart today and um, get it sorted so that we can, it is a little bit easier to operate because it doesn't go down as far as we'd want it to and it struggles to go back up as well. And it's obviously torn the seals apart. So we'll try and get the ram apart and um, see what, um, we can do about it. So we're just sort of gonna get ourselves set up to undo the monkey and then Yeah, we'll see what happens So as you can see, it struggles to go down and up. Um, that's probably a combination of we haven't used it for since shearing, so might need to get the oil pumping around. But also because that ram's a bit dodgy and I reckon the seals are probably not real flash in both rams as well. But <clears throat> we'll just focus on this one today and see what sort of improvement we can make to it.
Right, yeah, as you can see, we got the ram disconnected from the rest of the press here. So we unhooked all the hydraulic uh, pipes and undone it all. So there's still an anchor bolt down there. So what the plan is, we're gonna try and undo this um, large nut up here because we don't think we're gonna be able to pull this ram back here because it's bent and that's where it's gonna fight it is on this part here. So if we undo that, it might give it a bit of slack in the ram cylinder and we should be able to pull it out a little bit easier, hopefully. That's the idea anyway. So we're just gonna try and find a big shifter to undo that. And then we'll try and crack that nut, undo it. And hopefully we can just slip the ram out of the cylinder. <laughs> no, it looks like that rubber. There's a circle of any look, there's a hole. Alright, so we got this end cap off. There's a seal in there that probably will need to be replaced. Now, and there's a brass insert that still holds, goes around the ram and into the cylinder. And I think it might be just able to knock it out, hopefully, but because the cylinder's bent, oh, the ram's bent, sorry. It's sort of going to make it a little bit challenging, but we'll see how we go. Alright, so we've got the brass insert out. Obviously, O rings in there, seals help seal it. So, it would have just been a bit tricky because it was bent. That was what was holding it. So, we should be able to pull the cylinder out. That was missing out, <laughs> Alright, so you can probably see the bow in it. 
up here. So that's the main problem we need to fix. That's a pretty substantial angle. Um, yeah, that's our main problem there. So hopefully we can get that straightened out and then we'll clean all this up and replace this seal up here, which <clears throat> no doubt um, will help us quite a bit with doing that. And we'll have a look at what sort of condition this cylinder's in. We might be able to just hone that out ourselves to just make it a little bit better. All right, so just having a bit of look at these seals here. So this one separates into two pieces. Um, the metal inserts obviously come out. Then there's an O-ring in there on both sides, as well as this seal here, which we'll have to re replace. This um, end part here, the seal's pretty knackered. You can see they're sort of flaking off. And there's a couple of O-rings in there. Well, that's an O-ring as well. We'll have to clean this up a little bit because it was jammed in there. I had to mince it up a little bit with the screwdriver to get it out. That's not a drama. This doesn't move. It just sits in there. So we can clean it up and put it in there properly. <clears throat> then we have the end cap part. There's a circular that holds another seal in there that we'll have to knock out. Um, I don't know how we're going to go with these seals. I don't know if this one will have a number on it, but we'll have to try and match something up. This one will probably be the hardest to get. And then, yeah, just had a look in the cylinder. It doesn't look particularly bad. Like the, the ram's got a little bit of marking on it. Like a little bit, not scored as such, but there's like just a few dings and whatnot in it that we can hopefully, when we get it strained, we'll get it cleaned up a little bit. And then we'll just bang a hone down the cylinder and um, that should tidy it up a bit and it shouldn't be so rough and that'll help it seal as well. So we'll just extend our hone so that it all sort of cleans up good. And uh, yeah, that should be good. So we'll tidy up here and um, we'll get ready to do this cattle work. All right, I ended up taking the seal out of this end cap here. Um, pretty different sort of seal. I've never seen one like it before. And uh, yeah, it's, don't know how we'll go again. One's got some numbers on there, some very vague numbers. There's also this steel insert that which sits in the seal. Like that. So that's sort of how it goes together. And there's a circle that holds it in there. So we'll see how we go with getting that stuff. All right, everybody, we're just sort of bumming around at the moment, waiting for mum to finish up her coffee. Um, we just we just had a quick look at the scarifier. We've been talking about sort of the plans for this year when it comes to the crops we're going to do. And I think our plans are um, three pa oh, two paddocks of oats and a paddock of grass. Um, yeah, we're just sort of talking about how we're going to go about breaking up the ground. So the last video you guys would have seen was when we were fencing. We're going to use that paddock for one of the paddocks of oats. And we're going, and that paddock will have to be ploughed because it's got raised beds. So, and we're also going to burn that one as well to burn the grass off. So, once we've ploughed that, then we'll worry about after that. But um, the back paddock that we had Triticale in this year, the one that was didn't turn out very well and we had a lot of trouble breaking it up, we're going to put to grass, and so we don't have to worry about it so, quite so much anymore because it's just a real pain in the ass when it's a wet year but we've just been talking about what points we're going to use for the paddocks so i'll sort of give you over to dad and he can explain what we're going to do and sort of his reasoning behind it yeah hey, good idea viewers um we're going to use a scarifier again this year because it'll be quicker and easier tear the paddocks up now we've had this rain We've been getting a fair bit of rain here over the period of time, so the paddocks have got plenty of moisture and make it a bit quicker than trying to plough it. So um, we've got these points, these type of points on it at the moment, but they're fairly worn. They're sort of rounded off on the nose and they wouldn't penetrate in very well. So uh, not that we're chasing a great heap of depth for the pasture paddock we're going to sow out but we're going to use these points which I haven't but used for a very long time they're new but back in my day I sort of called them a buster point because they're as you can see 
they're a bit narrower than the ones that are on it now. These were sort of more of for secondary cultivation and a bit of weed kill because they're wide and they'd cut through the soil and slice off any weeds under the ground and whatnot. Whereas these ones are more just for busting up the ground because they've got that nice sharp point on it and that wear strip up the middle and it should they should keep their shape for a fair while so when we get a chance we're going to change from these ones and put these fellas on and um, in theory it'll help slice through the ground a fair bit easier because they're not as wide and um, they'll tear, help bust it up a bit more so whereas these ones would take a fair bit of because they're wide they take a fair bit of pulling through the ground and um, we don't really have to do that at this point while we've got those fellas so and we don't it's not really all that necessary for the the grass paddock because we want to just be able to dig down a bit deeper with those is that right yeah that's right it's more it's more just to sort of break it open um if you would if the scarifier was the only implement you had you'd go through all your paddocks with these on work it up and then i'm talking back old school before you had all the sprays and cultivators and whatever scarify was the only thing you had you'd change onto those ones for a weed kill and sort of help break down your clods and soil a bit more um, but yeah because we'll plow our other little paddock after we try and get it burnt it'll be all torn up with the plow anyway so it won't matter if those are on it or those are on it it'll still do the same sort of job so. but we basically we plan on having these ones on it for the majority well for all the work we do this year so it'll be fine for that second paddock triticale it won't matter if we're using these ones will it? No, no so we'll just keep them on the whole year then pretty much pretty and much. see how we go so yeah that's our plan for points this year what we're sort of hoping to do um should have enough of these Buster ones anyway, we've got heaps oh, of them by the looks yeah. of If we had to change over to the wider ones for whatever reason, we would have to get a few more. We don't have quite enough for the entire scarifier. But <clears throat> yeah, we hopefully won't have to use them, so that shouldn't be a drama. Yeah. So that's our rough plan for anyway, for what the opening, what we're going to start off with anyway, with the three paddocks. Obviously one will get ploughed and burnt. Well, burnt then ploughed, and then we'll scarify all three of them, and then the cultivator will come out at some point as well, and we'll just run that through a few times to break it up a little bit finer. But um, yeah, that's the rough plan anyway. We'll see what happens. Mum and Dad just going out, Dad's on the two wheelers as you saw, obviously Mum's on the quad. They're going to start rounding up the cattle and bringing them in. So I'm not really needed out there at the moment while well, they just sort of round them up in the paddock. So we'll chuck the drone up and we'll get a bit of a bird's eye view, eh?
and dad just got brought the cows in as you would have just seen so just got mum here with me at the moment so i'll give it we'll get a quick update off her of what's been happening you know, the last time we had did any cattle work on the channel anyway um was when we were tagging the calves so that was what like four five months ago probably more no, well, more than that. So, you know, I'll give you that with the mum so you can give an update and say what we're doing today. Yeah, hi. Uh, today is the day they get weaned. So, uh, oh. we're um, going to separate the calves from the cows and um, hopefully it won't be too much of a drama. They'll probably call each other for a couple of days and uh, keep me awake for a couple of nights, but they'll, uh, they'll settle down once they, uh, you know, find they don't really need each other that desperately. Uh, there's a couple that I'll wean slowly and they're the dairy, the calves from the dairy cows because of course the dairy cows um, have more milk and need a gradual process. So uh, yeah, that's what we're doing today. And what else has been happening with them since we tagged them? Uh, well, the calves anyway. Well, they've been growing and they've been growing quite well. So I'm pretty happy about that. We had a uh, slow start to spring, but uh, we had a really good, um, you know, heap of feed come through once the warm weather um, happened and the grass finally got to come through. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with the progress of the calves at the moment. Um, at the moment, cattle prices here are really good and I'm very tempted to send some off to the February weaner sales. But I don't know if any of you are aware, I like to chase the weight. I like to get the weight up around the 420 kilos. Um, and I don't think, well, I know they all won't be that weight. Some may be close. And it's, it's sort of a game like you're tempted, uh, do you take the uh, advantage of the higher prices and you know sell a few or do you just wait and do your normal thing? It's pretty hard when the prices are good to make your mind up, but I haven't made my mind up. Um, but I'm kind of leaning towards still just chasing the 420 kilos. So we'll see what happens. And if there's any change, uh, I'll have to let Cam know and um, we'll see what happens from there. But yeah, today's weaning day. So yeah, hopefully it goes well. All right, so yeah, we'll start running these through the race and draft them off. So similar thing to what we do with the sheep and you would have seen before you follow along. Same, we've done it with the cows a couple of times. So that's what we're gonna do. So you're just letting all the small ones into that yard? For now, yeah, I've got to sort out where you
Righty so we've got a cow in the uh, crush at the moment with its lame, so mum's cleaning its foot up, see if there's anything wrong with it. Well, I'm just checking to see if there's anything stuck between her claws because it's been a bit muddy and she might have just had a built up a build up of mud. Um, but I'm kind of thinking that she, it's also been muddy uh, and she may have a slight hoof abscess, um, which I hope she doesn't because I'm not real good at finding them. Um, but she may have, so I'm just going to get all the mud out. I'm using a horse hoof pick. Uh, and I'll stick the hoof testers on and see if we get a pain reaction. If she is so I suspect it. Well these things they put pressure on the hoof and if there's an abscess or something sore in there the cow will flinch. bit of a flinch there not really well, actually not really might have been just a mud thing because I really sort of thought if it was sore anywhere it would have been the outer claw just from the way she was walking but I'll just stick the testers on here because that looks like I actually need to clean that out I don't know if we've got a little bit of underrun sole or something this looks like it might be an old split which is like a not a good place to have a split but she may well have got a bit of a uh, bit of an injury in that um, old split uh, I'll just put the testers on it just see if she oh okay try again another part of her hoof it's all right yeah kind of looks that way might have a little bit of a oh then again she's not really doing great right, do might just have and I'm not real good at this anyway. Oh sorry Mookie. But sometimes even though I'm not real good at it I can kind of find a bit of an opening and it'll relieve itself uh, which I've done in the past just found an opening but I haven't actually got to the pass but the pass has got to the opening so even though this isn't something I'm good at I've opened it up a little bit, like not much though. So what I might do is just do what I've done in the past and let's let the abscess find a hole and um, keep an eye on her. If she gets any worse, I'll get her back in, but I'll um, get a um, power tool onto it, a uh, Dremel or something, because I don't think our Dremel's actually here. Actually, that doesn't look that bad. It doesn't really look like it got oh, There is a slight track, but it's might leave it at that and just keep an eye on her. And if it gets any worse, I'll get her back in and and get serious. You just want to point to sort of where you. Yeah, um, steady. Um, yeah, I was just sort of following that old crack because chances are there's probably an abscess up in there somewhere. 
but yeah it's really hard and it's hard to actually cut so um, I probably need a dremel or something to open it up but I'll keep an eye on her because sometimes the pus will just find where you've dug a bit of a hole anyway um, yeah and if it doesn't I'll uh, go a bit harder okay she can have her leg back and quite often they like to stand with that sling holding them if they've got a bit of a sore foot. So um, we'll give her a leg back, make sure she's standing on it before we let her um, take the full weight off that uh, strap. Because if you let the strap down too quickly, sometimes they'll fall down because they kind of like hanging, hanging in it. So um, close this up. Way. and then top handle. No, no, no. Just pull. Just, just pull them out. Oh, there we go. Easy dug it. She's on her foot. It's all good. She ain't going to fall down. Yes, thank you, Dairy Australia, for your wonderful idea. Mm. Mm. Makes life a bit easier. I suppose she can go. Like, there's no other reason I need to hold her here. I'll keep an eye on her and Right, yeah, so what we're currently doing is shifting through the um, wieners for, because we have three dairy cows, we're trying to find their calves and mum couldn't find the numbers of the calves for one in particular cow, so we're sort of trying to match it up, seeing which one will go to it, but it's a lengthy process, so <clears throat> yeah, we'll come back to you as when we've got them all sorted out. And as you would have just seen, we mum and dad ran the cows back out to their paddock. So once we've done this, we'll be able to run these wieners out to their separate paddock as well. So we'll be back in a minute.
majority, eh? So, wieners are out in their paddock. The wieners from the dairy cows have been split up and they're just in a little, um, it's not so much of a paddock as an old hay storage yard with a little bit of a lane with some trees are there and there. And then the cows for those wieners are in the paddock beside them. So where our mum's sort of idea with them is to, um, I think let them in occasionally because they're dairy cows, they have a lot more milk. So she needs to allow the wieners still to drink off them a little bit and then she'll sort of just gradually wean them off and that sort of will uh, control their milk production a little bit more evenly. So that's the sort of plan with those ones anyway. So um, yeah, that's pretty much everything done for the day. The cattle work took us a fair while, it's just a bit of a dicking around. Um, they're quite stubborn to move, so they take some time. But uh, yeah, we got sorted in the end. So we'll wrap up the video. Thanks everybody for watching, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. All right.